Hello everybody, Launch here. We are looking at a game called Buttons, and it's pretty fun. Uh, it gets pretty challenging towards the end. The point is to click the button that's circulating around the screen, and as you click it, it gets smaller and moves faster, and you have to click it 10 times, and if you miss it 100 times, then the game is over. Um, it's a pretty fun game. And it looks like it could be pretty simple to make. And I think that we can make it um, a little a little different, a little differently. And um, I think we can add our own little touch on to it. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, start with a new project. Let's call this one Centipede. Yeah, okay. Kind of like the old game, um, you know, this old retro game. I, I'm envisioning instead of just one button going around the screen, um, like a centipede of different circles, like 10 circles, and you have to click on each circle um, to make each section go away. And so it'll have the same kind of basic principle of if you click on it, then you get it, uh, you know, that's the point of the game. And then if you miss, then you get penalized somehow. So let's get started. Uh, I think the first thing that I need to do is maybe there's already a sprite in here that we could use. I'm thinking the ball sprite probably will work for the sections of our centipede. If not the button, yeah, let's go with the ball. And I'm going to get rid of our scratch cat because it's not needed. Oh, good. There's a green. Okay. Let's make a message called play. I'm going to make that lowercase. And we're going to make a start screen. So I'm going to send a message play from a menu. So that's why I don't want to start with the when green flag clicked. I'm going to instead say when I receive play, then we're going to have the, our uh, centipede start to move around. And let's just start with getting the centipede to move around in a random looking path. So let's First, just say, when I receive play, move 10 steps if on edge bounce. Okay, that's looking good. If we do a turn, every time we go through that forever loop, Let's see if that works. Oh, duh. Oh, that's way too much. Okay. Not bad. I'm trying to think of how to make the sections follow the lead, the head, right? So one thing I like to do in um, when I'm working is look to see if there are any other. Let's just see if there are any other centipede. Let's see if there are any other centipede programs out there um, that we can look at what they're doing. Ooh, perfect. This might work. Centipede follow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That looks promising. Cool. Thank you. Happy kiss 395. Let's see what it looks like inside. Okay, I just took a look at some other projects and there was a pretty good centipede one that uh, had sections that followed the head and it looked pretty good. Um, I think though I, I'm just going to go with making my own original idea using lists and uh, just storing data in lists, um, including the x and y coordinates. So let's see if we can make that. Um, this is 
where it'll probably get a little messy. So I'll come back with a progress update. Okay, I've got a bit of a progress update for you. I think I like it. I think it looks good. I mean, the head looks a little weird, but I think it'll be okay. Um, we can adjust the speed and the size later. Um, but basically what I've done is uh, we have some parallel programs going on here um, all when we receive the play broadcast and when we start as a clone. So I think I, I think I'm okay with this. I think this looks cool. I do need to add something real quick uh, to say um, basically when when the sprite or when the clone is clicked, then it should delete. So let's try and do that right now. Um, I should be able to say just a simple one like this. When this sprite is clicked, uh, delete this clone. Let's see if that works. Hmm. Maybe let's play from the project page so we're not like grabbing the sprites. Okay, I think it works. Let's go ahead and make it so that the speed changes. So right now we don't have a variable called speed. Um, so let's make that real quick. And basically when we receive play, actually let's set this variable when the program starts. All right, so let's let's start it actually slower, kind of give the illusion that it will be an easy game, and then it'll get pretty difficult by the end. And all we have to do is we're going to put the speed in where we have how many uh, moves we make each time. And then now when this sprite is clicked, change speed by, let's try 10. Let's try that. Okay. Ooh. Okay, well that increased to be... <laughs> Okay, well that does get pretty difficult pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, let's change. Let's change that to to five. Cause that's just outrageously difficult. Okay. And then let's also set the size. Okay. And We'll set this in the beginning, set, let's actually set it to a little bit larger. All right, I made a couple changes. Um, I got rid of a, a little bit of excess. I was trying to figure out what was going on and I think it looks okay. Um, what I did is I ended up hiding the actual sprite like I was supposed to in the beginning. Um, Oh, well, that's supposed to. There we go. Um, so that now just the clones show up. What? <laughs> Why does it look like a U? Um, I think I made some good changes. I simplified it a bit, and I also um, fixed a couple errors for some reason. <laughs> this was under a different message. Uh, and I also set the layers to uh, correspond with the clone number, duh, which has made the centipede look normal and much better. So you can see here, I'll press the space bar to run our little sequence. 
and there it goes. <laughs> awesome. Oh, it gets so hard. <laughs> it looks good though. It looks good. Okay. Now let's make the penalty, right? Is there a when backdrop, when stage is clicked? There we go, that makes it easy. When stage is clicked, let's do, what should we call this? Penalty? All right, let's do, uh, let's do a sprite, like a thumbnail types right, which we still need to make that too, a thumbnail. Um, all right, I'm just gonna make my own little game over. And of course we have to use the scratch font, right? Game over. And make it bigger. Okay, when clicked, we need to have this hidden all the time. And I wanna make sure that it's always in the center. There we go. And then when I receive game over, show, go to front. Let's try that. Okay, we're playing it. And then we get game over. Cool. All right, now let's add kind of a menu, like a play button. So let's, how about this button? And we'll say play. Oh, and I just realized we don't even have a winner screen. I am very pessimistic. I don't think anyone's going to win this. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I'll add a winner screen. I have the game over. Um, I am going to start this off on button A, which is play. And then we're going to say when I receive game over, then we should go to, say right there. Okay, another progress update. I think we've got some, you know, basic menu items going on here. So let's press the green flag button and we have the play button that shows up. It looks off center. Is that off center? What's going on here? Okay. Now let's click it and see. Uh, I'm gonna make a countdown next, but okay, good. And my penalty is working. Let's just see. Ah, you know what, this'll take all night. Let's set the penalty to five. What's that about? Uh, maybe we gotta start over. Okay, play. Oh, you know what we have to do? Reset our penalty. All right, I think it's, Pretty good, I think it's ready for a countdown. Um, so far, if we press the green flag, then our play button shows up. If, if we click it, then our centipede shows up in three seconds. It rolls around. If we click more than the allowed penalty amount, game over appears, or sound plays, or the centipede disappears, and play again appears. And then we can play again. Penalty is reset to zero. And we basically start over fresh. 
All right, let's make a um, countdown and then a winning screen. And maybe I don't I don't love when we show variables like this. I'd prefer to have my own counter. So I'm going to make the countdown screen first and the winning screen. And then I'll come back and show you. And then we'll see. We'll see. I think this is the last progress update. I, I think we're just about there. I think we're done um, with the majority of the program, the, the game. Um, basically, I added a win uh, page or, or notification as a different costume. And so I have the game over and the win. And uh, I added a variable called win or lose to determine which um, costume the sprite should display and basically set it so that um, when the penalty is greater than the amount that we set, let's say 100, uh, then we set win or lose to lose. But when the score, where did I put it? Oh yeah, when the score is equal to 10, then we set winner to lose to win. And I, I've been thinking about, you know, different ways that we could make this program different. And um, I think a couple things come to mind. We could make like a variable slider down here that you can choose how many sections of the centipede that you want. We could add that in as a, as a variable and set the very or, or insert the variable here and here. Um, in fact, let's just do that real quick. Um, centipede length. Oh, this could be interesting. <laughs> okay. It's not too bad because it kind of establishes a pattern. Uh, you know what? This gets really ridiculous. I'm going to hide that for now. If people want to get in and play that way, they can. I didn't add the penalty counter as text. I'm just leaving it as a displayed variable. Centipedes don't live in the desert. Where do they live? Well, I guess they do live in the desert sometimes. Those big nasty ones. Yeah, let's put them in the desert. I just remembered I wanted to make one more little thing. Uh, when you click, I want there to be some sort of visual cue that you missed. So basically we want when stage is clicked, broadcast, miss, when I receive miss, let's make it fade and kind of spin. Okay, that looks kind of cool. Okay, I think we're done. Let's share it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button so that I know that you liked it and I'll make more videos like this. Um, and if you really liked it, then go ahead and subscribe so that you can hear about any new videos that come out.